What's going on everybody? Shiraz Ahmed here and today we're going to be talking all about Tim Horton's coffee and restaurant chain. For anyone who doesn't know, Tim's or Timmy's, whatever nickname serves you best, is a Canadian classic and you can find one on pretty much every street corner. Funny enough, the two things that my cross-border wealth management clients typically mention missing most about Canada is of course the healthcare system and Timmy's. So stay tuned while we talk a little bit more about the history of the restaurant and the man whose namesake started it all. Okay, welcome back. So Tim Horton was born in 1930 in Cochrane, Ontario, which is about seven or eight hours by car from the greater Toronto area. He first started to play hockey from a professional standpoint in 1946, and by 1952, he was ready to start his almost 20-year stint with the Toronto Maple Leafs. He left the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1970, playing a few more years in the NHL with a few teams in New York, Pittsburgh, and Buffalo, eventually retiring from professional hockey in 1974. Now, during his pro career, he also appeared in about seven All-Star games and 486 consecutive Leaf games. Now, that was a club record, which was not broken until 2007. Now, Tim Horton's first business ventures were actually in a burger restaurant, also called Tim Horton's, and a Studebaker dealership. Now, it's not clear what happened to these initial investments, but there are actually no more Studebakers and Tim Horton's doesn't sell hamburgers. So I would imagine they unfortunately weren't very successful. Now, he opened the first Tim Hortons donut shop in Hamilton, Ontario on Ottawa Street in 1964. Now, by 1968, a single restaurant had already become a multi-million dollar franchise. Now, the next chapter of the story comes in 1974. Tim was driving home from Buffalo after playing a game against his former team, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it appears that he was driving while unfortunately intoxicated and his blood alcohol content was about double the legal limit with about half a filled bottle of vodka was also found among the wreckage. There were also prescription drugs, unfortunately, in the car, but according to the autopsy, known paid killers were found in his body, but traces of the ingredients of those drugs were. Now, the car that he was driving was also found to be in good mechanical condition, so it's likely that the drugs and or alcohol, or a combination of them, was a major factor in his untimely death. Now, at the time, though, no official public inquiry was made, and his autopsy was not made public and police would not state if he was actually intoxicated. It was only in 2005 that his autopsy was ultimately made public with the witness statements redacted. Horton had also brought on a partner into the business in 1967. This was a man named Ron Joyce. Now, when Horton was killed in 1974, Joyce actually bought out Horton's widow's shares of the business for about $1 million, making Joyce the sole owner. Now, years later, Horton's widow, Lori, would become unhappy with this deal and ultimately filed the lawsuit. Now, this lawsuit was lost in 1993 and an appeal declined in 1995. She ended up dying in 2000, so it's unlikely that any future claims would be put forward by her family or estate. Strangely enough, Tim Horton's eldest daughter and Joyce's son, Ron Joyce Jr., ended up getting married creating a continuation of the partnership and ultimately creating some sort of weird Tim Hortons power couple. Now they are joint owners of Tim Hortons franchises in Coburg, Ontario. Now today, Tim Hortons has just under 5,000 restaurants in 15 countries worldwide. About 3,800 of these are in Canada, but Canadians traveling abroad will be able to find their favorite coffee chain in places like the United States, countries like China, the United Kingdom, Spain, Mexico, Thailand, and most recently India and the Philippines. So ever wonder why there is no apostrophe in Tim Hortons? Maybe you never noticed. They chose this from a branding standpoint as it allows them to get around laws in Quebec, which has rules about labeling products in French. By dropping the apostrophe, it's no longer English, and it's the same name branding can be used across the country. Now, would you like me to do a video on the economics of owning a franchise? If so, drop me a like and subscribe below and send me a quick note. I'll put my contact details at the end of this video. I also really appreciate all of you who have been watching our video, if you watch all the way to this point. It really does help out the channel when you watch the video all the way through to the end and also hit that like and subscribe button. If you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified the next time that I upload a video. So until next time, thank you so much for your time. Stay safe out there. Bye for now.